Hello, my name is George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. So we make a whole lot of videos for, for your interest and different types and all the rest of it. This is one of those we make about geographical places where your ancestors may have come from. In this case, the Scottish borders. In other words, in Scotland, the, the southern part near the border with England. Famous for a number of things. You can see these horses here. They have annual ridings to remember their history, which we'll talk about in a moment. So let's have a look at this in more detail. So here's a map of the Scottish borders. You can see that black line with the Cheviot Hills. That's the border between Scotland to the north and England to the south. Funny enough, you tend to think it may be directly east-west, but you can see there's quite an angle. <clears throat> so in fact, typically what people think of the borders and the borders towns are this cluster of uh, towns here, Gala Shields, Melrose, Selkirk, Hoyk, Jedburgh. Uh, but in fact, the borders historically has included all of the counties along the borders and Dumfrieshire and Kukubrishire to the west. <clears throat> so it's a, Scotland in some ways is like almost three countries joined together. The Scottish borders is pretty different from the bit where you immediately think about the cities of Edinburgh and Glasgow and Aberdeen and Dundee. Then the highlands and islands have a different character again. But certain features of the Scottish borders, say historically, Include all the boroughs along the English border. Now, you would have heard of the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, the Wars of Independence when Scotland fought England, end of the 13th century into the 14th century. Of course, the borders, the boroughs, were just over the border, so bore the brunt of a lot of the fighting that went on. There's a talk about the border reavers. They were very famous, but they used to go across the border and do armed raids on some of the English towns and places. Uh, I mentioned earlier the horses, the annual common ridings. To this day, places like Hoyk and Selkirk and so on have an annual um, commemoration when people ride the horses and remember their history. <laughs> a little throwaway comment, dunce. The word dunce comes from the 13th century theologian Duns Scotus, who was rubbished, if you like, for some of his views. Now, these days, there's a southern upland way which runs from the east to the west of the south of Scotland and very much goes through the Scottish borders. So it's got a unique identity compared to the rest of Scotland. And if your ancestors came from, they will have been influenced by that unique identity. So let's look at the Maxwell and Moffat families. So here we are in Dumfrieshire, a bit to the west of the English border. So there's William Maxwell. He's born in late 18th century, as is his wife Agnes Swan. Um, they're going to marry into um, the other family, Robert Moffat and Margaret Hastings. You see, again, different places in Dumfrieshire. People didn't move a lot before the Industrial Revolution, so quite a common thing to marry people who lived fairly close by. So there we are, son John Maxwell marries Marion Moffat in 1862, so the mid-19th century. Um, and going forward, their son John's born, 1867, there we are, and he will marry Lilius Moffat uh, from Thornhill, just north of Dumfries, and they marry in 1900. So there's the Maxwell and Moffat family. Let's look at one or two of the things we may find out about them. Now, firstly, occupations. Now, they're living in fairly rural areas, so there's William, he's a sawyer, sawing wood, his son, John Maxwell, a woodcutter very much reflecting that sort of the forest and so on that they lived in. Son John became an ironmonger, still a trade, slightly different, but that influenced where they lived. Now, things we can bring to life in this, where they lived, the house is still there, Foresters Hall in Kirkmahoe, lived there for a number of years. Um, and so we uh, did this uh, photo for the people we were working for. They were very excited to find that the house was still there. Now, uh, what about people? Well, there's a real character, Thomas Maxwell. Uh, you can see a real Scot <laughs> with his kilt and sporran and so forth. Now he was a character. He was a gamekeeper, and then became a grain miller. Now a whole lot of things about his life. And then when he dies, he was actually buried in the Kirkton Church. So there's the church where he was born. And already, in a few minutes, we're bringing to life this family. It's very much what we aim to do if we look at, into your ancestors. Now, let's take another thing, Broxburghshire. I mentioned earlier on these places of Kelso, Jedburgh, Hoyk, Selkirk, Melrose. There's the English border. This is the Roxburghshire. It's sort of really the county you would first think of in the Scottish border. We're going to look at a family who came from Roxburghshire, the White and Kers. Now, there's Thomas White, born in Melrose, 
1783, he marries Mary Armstrong. They're going to marry into the families of the Kerrs and the Bells from Hoyk. Uh, so the instinct to try and learn to pronounce these places, eh? <laughs> H-E-W-I-C-K. If you've not seen that before, you probably wouldn't say Hoyk. So there's Thomas White. He marries Grizel Kerr. Grizel, kind of an interesting name from the past. That was quite a common one. Now, I'm using this example to talk about the Scottish naming pattern. There were very strong traditions in the past for how you name your children. You can see there, the first son is named after the father's father, second son after the mother's father, and the third son after the father. Similarly with the daughters, named as mother's mother, father's mother. So we're going to look at the white children. You can see and you can guess if they follow this pattern what the names might be. So well, here we are. Here were Thomas White, the firstborn son. Yes, sure enough, he gets the father's father's name. Margaret's the first daughter. Yes, she's named after Margaret Bell. Second daughter next, Mary White. Yes, she's named after the father's mother. William White, he's named after the uh, mother's father, William Kerr. George White, now, he's the third son. Um, but he can't be called Thomas as well, surely. But you get families where the same name occurs for five or six generations. So instead of calling him Thomas, upon having two Thomases, he's called George, the next son's called John, and then the third daughter is born, Grizel. Yes, and sure enough, she is given the name after the mother. So very often when we're researching, we will find this sort of pattern. It can be both helpful in identifying, yes, this is someone of that family, but equally confusing if you find there are six Thomas Whites after each other. So another little feature, particularly common in the borders. Okay, so that gives you a bit of a flavor. We've got a whole bunch of uh, videos. So if you're looking at just Antism Scotland in general, one well, different areas, so there's the west of Scotland, Glasgow, you may be looking at English ancestors. Surnames is something we find is of great interest. So we've got videos about that. And people, of course, frequently ask us, well, what would it be like if I got you to research my ancestors? So we've got three couples to actually talk about their particular experience and what they enjoyed and found out about their families. So I hope you found that of interest. Please feel free to get in touch. We do a free consultation. Send us brief details of what you know. We then go and have a look and assess what would be involved and so on and so forth and come back to you with the options that we suggest and the costs involved. Um, there are lots of videos if you look on YouTube under research through people. There's our website. Um, get in touch. Email us at info at researchwithpeople.com. Give us a ring if you want and there's a phone number. So I hope you found it of interest. Uh, very much look forward to hearing from you.